यस क्या लॉस बुक किया है टैक्स बचाया है ना Hey folks, here Rachana Ranade here, and I welcome you all to a very interesting video about how to smartly save taxes on stock market gains. If you remember, I had done one more video on taxation recently, somewhere around twenty six Jan, in which I had said, "Three guna logan dena padega." And in that, I have talked about what is the meaning of taxes, what are the different types of taxes. We talked about even Constitution of India in that video. So, if you want to watch that video, you can check out the I button, but not right now. After the video is over, what are we focus? what is going to be our focus in this video is going to be about taxation on five different types of gains which different types of gains it could be a short term capital gain it could be a long term capital gain it could be a gain because of dividend it could be gain because of intraday transaction in equity it could be about gain in f and o segment that is a futures and option segment what happened you want intraday taxation first change the sequence f and o ठीक है एफ एंड सेकेंड नाउ आता मैं चेंज नहीं करना रहा है रहा है आता ओके चलो सो विद दिस एज अ बेसिक स्टफ यू नो व्हाट इज गोइंग टू बी कवर्ड इन द वीडियो बट इफ यू वर टू अंडरस्टैंड ऑल दीज फाइव टैक्सेशन एस्पेक्ट्स वेरी क्लियरली यू नीड टू नो अबाउट फाइव मोर थिंग्स टैक्सेशन डिपेंड्स ऑन वॉट नंबर वन इट डिपेंड्स ऑन द टाइम पीरियड नंबर टू इट डिपेंड्स ऑन आर देर एनी डिडक्शन अवेलेबल और नॉट Okay, this will decide what will be the final final rate of tax which will be applicable on the gain. Number four, it's not got anything to do with the taxation, but super super important. What? Don't forget to hit that like button and share this video with lot of friends so that all get educated and they get more and more awareness on the subject of taxation on stock market gains. And last but not the least, this time I would like to really 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 thank these people. and of course everyone is special but i'm trying my level best to you know sh- give a small shout out from my end to at least two two people in each and every video now onwards because otherwise i don't have the pleasure to interact with you personally but then i thought i can at least give a shout out to two people in every single video this time the first shout out go- goes to mr sagar and sagar has just congratulated me for the you know whatever women's day celebration and me featuring in the front page of almost all the newspapers so thank you sagar for uh, this amazing comment and how can i forget mr ratnavel natrajan and he has been super kind he comments on each and every video of mine and he always says this that i'm sharing your video with all of my friends so thanks a lot to all the viewers and this time special shout out to these two guys now let's try and understand the taxation of all the khatron ke khiladi Uh, means those people who love doing intraday trading we are talking about intraday trading in the cash segment or the equity segment we are not talking about intraday in f and o segment right now we are going to cover that okay so what happens in cash segment in the intraday let's understand the meaning first you buy today and you sell today itself or you sell today and then you buy today what is the difference buying first selling later or selling first and buying later what is the second concept second concept is nothing but concept of short selling if you want you can check out this video later but if you want to learn such amazing concepts like short selling or 75 plus concepts in a very simplified manner and in a very systematic manner then don't forget to check out my basics of stock market version 2.0 and this is a special coupon code for you the expiry of this coupon code is tomorrow so if you want to learn don't forget to check out our website rachanaranade.com right so one one point that we have understood till now is intraday means what buying and selling on the same day number one number two if it's an intraday transaction it will be treated as a speculative business now we are not here to understand ki why it is treated as speculative business why not non speculative business we'll go into ca intermediate and ca final taxation we are not here for any professional course taxation right so we just need to understand okay it is treated as speculative business what is the implication of that implication is that taxation will be as per whatever tax lab rate you are in means what assume i am into the 30% tax lab and in, in, in the 30% tax lab rate okay if i have any intraday profits how much tax will i have to pay on that 30% if he is in 10% gain 
चल का टेन टेन परसेंट स्लैब चल ओके ही विल हैव टू पे हाउ मच टैक्स टेन परसेंट टैक्स ऑन हिज स्पेक्युलेटिव गेन ऑन इंट्रा डे सिंपल राइट नाउ ही इज लाफिंग बिकॉज ये स्टडी ओनली हेड टोल्ड मी दैट ही हैज लॉट ऑफ लॉसेस इन इंट्रा डे ओके मोमेंट हाँ सो ये लॉट ऑफ लॉसेस इन इंट्रा डे ट्रेडिंग नाउ ही सैड वॉट टू डू कैन यू कैरी फॉरवर्ड दिस लॉस येस फॉर हाउ मेनी इयर्स फॉर फोर असेसमेंट इयर्स ओके सो इफ अज्यूम इन दिस इयर ही हेज लॉस ओके एंड अज्यूम जीरो गेन नथिंग नथिंग नेक्स्ट इयर ही हैज अ गेन कैन यू सेट ऑफ नेक्स्ट इयर गेन्स विथ प्रीवियस इयर लॉसेस येस बट फॉर हाउ मेनी हाउ मेनी असेसमेंट इयर्स यू कैन कैरी दैट फॉरवर्ड ओनली अप टू फोर असेसमेंट इयर्स आई होप दिस इज ऑल्सो क्लियर What about ATC? That one lakh fifty thousand ka deduction is that also available? If you have some intraday gains, answer is again yes. Well, in the immediate previous section, I talked about ATC. So, if I want to get a deduction under section ATC, there could be two possible options. Possibility number one through investment in I mean, something like PPF or a tax saver FD or equity oriented mutual fund, whatever. Possibility number one through investment route. Possibility number two through expense route means what? You spend on something and you get a deduction. But I believe that under ATC, one of the best things that you can do is spend on insurance. In insurance, if you ask me, I believe that term life insurance is one of the best ones to choose from. Why? Because number one, it's a very inexpensive solution, and number two, you'll also get the benefit of saving taxes. So, if I were to talk about, uh, you know, getting an insurance right now, 31st March is very near, and in that hurry, people might choose a wrong insurance for themselves and regret later. but don't worry ditto which is an insurance advisory platform and it is backed by zero the which was started by fin shots they'll help you in this entire insurance process what number 1 they'll help you to choose the right insurance policy you can book a free call with them and these guys will help you through whatsapp or text or in fact you can also get on a free call with them wherein they'll help you to choose the right insurance policy for you Number two, they'll take you through the entire buying process. Why? Because not all people are very tech savvy, right? So they'll help you in the entire buying of new insurance policy process. And number three, if required, they'll also help you in the claim settlement process as well. In fact, recently I took my additional new insurance policy. I booked a call with Ditto, and the experience that I got was really amazing. And if you want to experience the same thing, you can surely check out the link in the description box below. Now let's go ahead and come to a very interesting point about how futures and options gains are taxed. Number one, most important point that you should note is that it's treated as a normal business income. Means what? What do we mean by normal business income? Like assume you have you run a hotel, that's a normal business income. I run a business, that's a normal business income, right? Similarly, if you are gaining anything from F and O, that will also be treated as what? Normal business income. In short, it's not treated as a speculative business income. Number one. Number two, what about the tax rates? How much tax rate is applicable for futures and options gains? Same logic. It's treated as normal tax rates. Means what? If I'm into the thirty percent tax lab, the gains that I get from futures and options will be taxed at thirty percent. For him, ten percent. Ten percent. Correct. So I think this is also very well understood. But now comes the very interesting point about set off. If I have a separate business, like assume I have a hotel business, okay. But in F and O, if I have so much loss, okay. So I'll give you different different scenarios. I have so much loss in F and O. I have a, a another business, a hotel business, in which I have gain. Okay. Assume I had an extra house which I sold and on which I have gotten a capital gain this year. I have also earned some money on interest. Let us say interest on FDs. Okay. I also have a rental income, and of course. i have some salary income okay so i have one loss and i have five different income streams incomes or gains right now big question can i set off this huge loss against all these incomes yes or no let's go one by one okay first of all i have this income from hotel business can i set off some part of that loss here yes okay done so whatever gain i had got from that hotel everything is gone okay but still a lot of loss is remaining can i set off that loss against the income that i had got by selling my house yes all right so now whatever gain i had got by selling that house that is also gone oh 
still loss is remaining. You can imagine what maddening loss I have made. I would have made in FNO. This is just an example. Otherwise, I'm in profits in FNO. Okay. Third thing, I also want interest income. Can I set up that balance loss against that? Whatever. Okay, interest gone, but still some loss is remaining. My God. Now, what else was it? Fourth one still remaining. Now, one more rental income that I have. Okay, gone, but still some loss is remaining. And that salary is also remaining. Okay, last. Shall we try? Oi, what happened? Oh, it means that the loss on non-speculative business, normal business, F and O business in our example, cannot be set off against income from salaries. In the previous section, we had talked about what? In the previous section, we had talked about speculation gains and speculation loss. So, what was the rule there? Speculation loss can be set off only against speculation gain. Not anything else. I hope this point is absolutely clear. But there are many, many more interesting points. Like, if I am going back to F&O taxation, okay, that is considered as my normal business income, correct? Then what about my expenses? on internet charges what about my expenses on rent of that house of, of that office can i get that also as a deduction exactly that is what we are going to talk about in the immediate next section of the video now f and o income being treated as normal business income is really really important why let us understand any normal business to to run any normal business income i am going to incur a lot of expenses okay do i get that as a deduction Yes. So, for example, in my business, I pay salary. Do I get a deduction for that? Yes. I pay rent for my office. Do I get a deduction on that? Yes. Now, same. Think of your f and income as a f and business income. Are you maybe going to pay some rent for the office through which you are going to operate that? Can you get that as a deduction against your f and gains? Answer is yes. You will need a computer. You will need a mobile phone maybe. Uh, you can get a depreciation on that. Is that also allowable as a deduction? Answer is yes. Why not? Number three, you are going to pay electricity bill. Is that also a deduction? Answer is again yes. To sharpen your F&O skills, you have taken my F&O course. Is that also an expense which is related to your income earning activity of F&O? Answer is again yes. So don't forget again to check out my website, rachanaranade.com, right? So I hope you have understood that because it's a business income, you can obviously take all these as your business expenses. You can claim them as your business expenses. What will happen? Your ultimate profitability will be your f and gains minus all these expenses and uh, whatever will be remaining, you'll have to pay income tax on that amount. Wait, before that also. Whatever expenses that you have paid, STT, brokerage or maybe transaction charges, all these, these are also available as a deduction. Simple. So, balance amount pay, you'll have to pay income tax. One more interesting thing not at all encouraged from my side, but if you have taken a loan to invest or to trade in F&O, horrible decision, but if someone has done that, whatever interest you are paying on that loan, that is also allowable as a deduction against your gains from F&O. Okay, so I have told you a lot of points what are available as a deduction against your F&O gain. Still, if some gain is remaining, can I still reduce that gain? Yes, how? By investing again in ATC. Okay, 150,000 I told you just in the previous segment, right? So that is also available. Now, in another situation now, if you have incurred a loss in f and can you carry that forward? Yes. Till how many years? Till eight assessment years. I hope with this f and taxation is absolutely clear. But before that, one last point. Whether f and is an intraday transaction or f and you are taking a position today, squaring it tomorrow. Or you are taking the position today, squaring it after one week or after two weeks or at the end of the month. Everything, whatever is the scenario, taxation will be as per normal business income. So, intraday f and and uh, more than one day wala f and no separate tax treatment. Tax treatment remains the same. Now, let's discuss how will your listed equity shares ka gain, if I'm talking about short-term capital gain or long-term capital gain, how will that be taxed, okay? So, have a look at this table. What we have done, we are, we are talking about different parameters that we are going to discuss. We are also going to talk if it's a short-term capital gain, then how will it be taxed? And if it's a long-term capital gain, how will how it will be taxed, right? Before we go, go on to the taxation part, first one is what is short-term, what is long-term, correct? So, if I'm talking about any listed share, I bought it today and if I sell it within one year, 
then it will be termed as a short term and if i buy today and if i sell it after one year it will be termed as what long term so i hope the first point period of holding is absolutely clear so if i make a gain in a short term transaction how much will be my, will be my tax rate that will be 15% but if i get a gain in a long term capital asset i'll be taxed at the rate of 10% okay this one is also clear right now i have gotten a gain agreed do i get any deductions against that answer is yes which deductions let's understand one by one what about brokerage or other charges which are mentioned in that broker's note contract note do you get that as a deduction answer is yes if you see deductible deductible in both cases be it short term or be it long term correct what about the benefit of basic exemption limit do i get that and if you see yes is given in both but what is the interpretation of that i'll give you a simple example assume that your total long term capital gain on listed equity shares is 2 lakh rupees will you have to pay any tax on that answer is no why are a basic exemption limit is 2 lakh 50000 correct so no need to pay any tax on that if that 2 lakh rupees had instead of long term capital gain it would have been a short term capital gain of 2 lakh would you have been required to pay any taxes no why are it is within a basic exemption limit so no need to pay any taxes simple and clear yes so that was about benefit of basic exemption limit moving on to the next point this is an additional exemption that i'm talking about has got nothing to do with basic exemption limit so again i'll give you an example assume you are a person wherein you are getting a salary and your salary income is 10 lakh rupees simple deal salary income is 10 lakh rupees now in addition to that you have gotten a long term capital gain of 80000 rupees okay will you have to pay tax on that 80000 rupees of long term capital gain answer is no why here for long term capital gain you get an additional exemption of 1 lakh rupees okay means what one more example you want no problem instead of 80000 rupees if you would have gained if you if you had a long term capital gain of 1 lakh 20000 rupees then what will happen tell me from that 1 lakh 20000 rupees 1 lakh gone why exemption you will have to pay tax only on 20000 rupees at what rate 10% because it's long term correct long term clear now assume 10 lakh ka salary and instead of long term capital gain you have a short term capital gain whatever 80 80000 1 lakh 20000 or any figure will you have to pay tax on that yes so no additional exemption is available for a short term capital gain whatever you have that will be taxed at what rate 15% we have already discussed about that right now let's talk about set off assume you have a short term capital loss it can be set off against what short term capital loss can be set off against short term capital gain or even long term capital gain but if you have a short uh, if you have a long term capital loss long term capital loss can be set off only and only against long term capital gain okay moving on how many years can i carry forward my loss if you can see both cases same if you have any short term capital loss or long term capital loss you can carry forward for eight assessment years coming on to the last two points what is not available as a deduction if you are talking about security transaction tax that is not available as a deduction and even if i am talking about section 80c that 1 lakh 50000 that is not available as a deduction for gains from either short term capital gains as a short term capital gains or a long term capital gains i hope that till now whatever knowledge you had about short term capital gain long term capital gain ka taxation you have broadened your perspective on gains from both these now next 3 to 4 minutes i want 100% attention why in these 3 4 minutes i'm going to tell you a magic formula by which you can gain a lot but by paying zero tax how let me prove my point with the help of an example assume that today you are buying buying not buying you are buying shares which shares hdfc shares as an example this is not a recommendation so today you are buying hdfc shares worth rupees 10 lakh okay and assume that your target of these 10 lakh rupees invested is rupees 12 lakhs you are wanting to have what 20% gains in 2 years that is your target okay so let's understand what happens after 2 years because it's our example and because you have to win after 2 years what happens is that the value is actually rupees 12 lakhs okay are you happy ha dakho na zara chehra aur dis dete zara ha you are happy very good so after 2 years what what happens is that your value of hdfc shares has gone up to 
12 lakh rupees what was your cost tell me cost of buying was 10 lakhs what is your gain is this an ltcg yes long term capital gain is 2 lakh wait in just the previous section of the video i had told you that you will get an exemption of 1 lakh for long term capital gain so you are going to claim that exemption of how much 1 lakh rupees so what will be your balance ltcg so this was not your final ltcg i can say this was your base gain okay what is your final long term capital gain that is rupees 1 lakh how much tax you are going to pay on that tax rate is what tax rate is 10 percent so finally you will be paying 10,000 rupees you'll say kai salle you have just told that you are going to pay zero rupees tax and here you are showing 10,000 rupees tax asa kasa kai wait 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 now the concept of profit harvesting comes into place okay how are we going to do a profit harvesting for that let's understand so let me keep this i'll not i'll not you know rub this i'll give you case two what was your target tell me target was two lakh rupees gain agreed so assume that after one year so after one year your value of the shares has now become 11 lakh what was the cost at which you had bought these shares that was 10 lakh so assume that okay 11 lakh i'm happy so what do you do you sell these shares which were worth rupees 10 lakh so that was your cost price okay now what is your gain tell me gain is 1 lakh what is the exemption that is available exemption is of again 1 lakh so how much tax will you pay zero why and again is zero tax will be zero wait you are happy agreed but you are also sad at the same time why you said, but my target was 12 lakh na you are selling entire shares at 11 lakh only is there any solution yes there is a solution now this is this concept of profit harvesting pay attention you sold shares worth rupees 11 lakhs what do you have to do sell oops gone wait 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 what do you have to do sell and buy immediately this is the trick sell and buy immediately in simple words what are you doing you are booking profit of 1 lakhs but you are still waiting for that target of total 2 lakhs profit so now what happened what happened still do you have same number of shares in your portfolio yes but what is your new cost price now new cost price is 11 lakhs simple till here if you have not understood rewind and play again now what happens after another year so us iske baad after one year so ultimately this is now scenario after two years okay so iske baad after one year what has happened what is the value value is 12 lakhs is your target met yes what is your cost price now all 10 lakh no all 10 lakh you sold at 11 lakh and you again bought at 11 lakh so your new value is 11 lakh what is your gain gain is 1 lakh what is the exempt amount 1 lakh what is the tax zero oh ho now what happened ultimately let us understand ultimately your tax here is zero because you harvested your profit you took the benefit of one lakh each and every year so in the previous case in the previous case what was your gain pay attention what was your gain your gain was two lakh here what is your gain one lakh plus one lakh oh gain is same case one case two tax ten thousand tax zero zero i hope you have understood the magic of profit harvesting now let's come to a super interesting concept which is the concept of loss harvesting and what is that let's take an example of after a long time chandu and his bandhu okay both both had bought shares of abc limited and xyz limited 100 each okay in abc limited wherein he, they had bought 100 shares they both are in a profit of 50000 but in xyz shares they are in a loss of 30,000 simple till here okay now ideally tell me Chandu Bandhu both would have been required to pay the same amount of tax yes wait but they are paying separate amount of taxes how let's understand first let's take the case of Chandu oh by the way they had bought both these shares just let us say five months ago so tell me is it a short term or long term it's short term okay now what is Chandu doing Chandu is saying emotional I'm not going to book a loss I'm going to pay 50,000 
into 15% short term capital gain, I am going to pay a tax of how much? 7,500 rupees. Why is he not ready to pay, uh, book the loss? Because he feels that after one year, one and a half year, I am surely going to book a, uh, book a profit in this. So, unrealized loss remains just like that. Maybe after one and a half year, he makes a profit. Agreed. Okay, but that will be seen later. Till here, simple. How much has he paid tax? Again, he has paid a tax of 7,500. Done for this year. Now, let's check what Mr. Bandhu is doing. Bandhu, on the other hand, how much was the gain? 50,000. But he says, I'm going to book the loss. Book the loss of how much? 30,000. Balance, 20,000. Now, he's going to pay a tax of how much? 20,000 into 15%. That is 3,000. Now, you'll say, Kaya manda hai naha bandhu. Why? Why manda bandhu? Because he is booking loss to reduce the tax. Should that be the logic behind it? No, he's, he's super smart. Understand the logic behind it. What Bandhu has done? He has sold 100 shares of XYZ. But simultaneously, he has bought 100 shares of again same XYZ. Okay, so what happened? All in all, what happened? Did he book a loss? Yes, agreed. But same immediate next moment, he has again bought XYZ shares. So net net number of shares in his portfolio of XYZ remains same. Agreed. Now has his tax reduced? Yes. Now let understand what happens after one, one and a half year. His target is met. Now he is into profit. Okay, after one and a half year he is in profit. Can he can he book the profit at that time? Yes, because he still has 100 shares in his portfolio. Now because it's a long term, he will pay only 10% tax. And that too, he will also get a 1 lakh ka exemption. I think, or kya chahiye, right? So I hope you have understood this concept where you book a loss but immediately buy the shares. And this concept is known as a concept of loss harvesting. Can you see this in any of the portals? So if you have a zero the account, then you have to go to the console. Yes, click there and there. And finally, what can you see? Loss harvesting report. Exactly. So this is the simplest way to understand how much loss I can harvest to reduce my taxes. Coming on to the taxability of dividend, just three important points to be understood. Number one, Whatever dividend you are getting, that will be taxed at your normal tax lab rates, 30%, 10%, you know that. And that will be taxed under the head income from other sources, number one. Number two, if you are an NRI, then tax rate will be flat 20%, okay, only for NRIs. And third important point is that if the dividend income exceeds 5,000 rupees, then the company who is paying dividend, they will deduct tax TDS at the rate of 10%. Well, I hope you have enjoyed this taxation masterclass and by now, keep your hand on your head. I'm sure it might be hot. You have learned a lot in this entire video. But if you want to learn more on how to file taxes, especially five documents that you need to file taxes, you can click here. And if you want to know more about grandfathering concept, you can click here. Till then, take care. Chahin and bye-bye.